Mmm, that smell. This is uneven leather, isn't it? I would know that anywhere. <laughs> I don't know how you found it, but thank you. But I'm not finished admiring them yet. Can you smell that? Like rotting flesh. Just like back in Antiva City. Now, if only you could find me a prostitute or two, a bowl of fish chowder, and a corrupt politician, I'd really feel like I was home. <laughs> and they fit as well. Marvelous! What say you? Hmm, I could teach others, but not yourself. First, I would need someone who has training as a rogue. That is, unless you would care to spend the years it takes to gain the fundamentals. But, if there should be such a person who desires this training, yes, by all means, send them to me. The crows are already furious, no? I shall enjoy tweaking their nose further. What say you? By all means. I know little enough of the daily, other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter, and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease, and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All is tale in the book. How should I know? My mother was a whore, as you'll recall. None of the other elven boys in the whorehouse knew their fathers. I was not so unusual. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. It could have been much worse. Shall I tell you about what happened to the other whorehouse boys who did not fetch a decent price with the crows? Surely your life has not been so idyllic. People like you and I are not the product of happy lives of contentment, after all. My original point is that my mother's dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make, I knew that much, and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course, as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, they were discovered, and I never saw them again. I don't feel anything about them. Oh, we heard about them in the city, even deep in Antiva. I even had the notion once to run off and join them. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy, staring at those gloves. But, such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. What's on your mind? I have watched you for a time, and perhaps I was wrong. There seems to be something special between the two of you. He seems less guarded when in your company, allows himself to relax, and he seems genuinely happy. I think I was too harsh in my judgment before, and I am sorry. What you have may not last forever. Death and duty may part you, but love's worthiness is not diminished because of that. I should have seen this before. Instead, you learn to cherish every precious moment that you spend together, knowing that it may be the last. And for those of us watching, well, it brings warmth to these old bones to know that something so beautiful can be found in the midst of chaos and strife. Yes. Indeed. Yes.
How did a child survive that? The crater is still smoking. It's a boy. Five fingers, five toes. That's all that matters to me. The Maker has answered our prayers. Let's go home, Marta, and raise the Tyke as our own. And so you return. Lovely Morrigan has at last found someone willing to dance to her tune. Such enchanting music she plays, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Which one, I wonder? What has Morrigan told you? What little plan has she hatched this time? That she does. The question is, do you? Ah, but it is an old, old story. One that Flemeth has heard before, and even told. Let us skip right to the ending, shall we? Do you slay the old wretch as Morrigan bids, or does the tale take a different turn? It is a dance poor Flemeth knows well. Let us see if she remembers the steps. Come. She will earn what she takes. I'd have it no other way. Yes. <gasps> Mother's real grimoire, is it? I am glad you were able to find it after all. My thanks for retrieving it. I shall begin studying it immediately and unlock the power that it holds. Very well. Yes. Indeed, yes.
What can I do for you, Warden? Certainly. Warden. This... This is star metal. If you give this to me, I will craft for you a thing of legend. Nothing. My family owes you much. And so it shall be. It is done. I call this blade Starfang. May it serve you well. I must rest after my exertions. Warden? Orzammar has heard your call. We march for you, Warden. As you say. But you have news. You have? Wonderful. Let us go at once to Eamon's side and see if the urn's healing powers live up to their reputation. You have been deathly ill for a very long time. Do you remember nothing? Tegan? What are you doing here? Where is Isolde? I am here, my husband. I'm Connor. Where is my boy? Where is our son? He lives. Though many others are dead. There is much to tell you, husband. Dead? Then... it was not a dream. 
Much has happened since you fell ill, brother. Some of it will not be easy for you to hear. Then tell me. I wish to hear all of it. This is most troubling. There is much to be done, that is true. But I should first be thankful to those who have done so much. Grey Warden, you have not only saved my life, but kept my family safe as well. I am in your debt. Will you permit me to offer you a reward for your service? I understand, but regardless of your motivations, I feel you are worthy of a reward. I would like to honor your efforts, nothing more. Then allow me to declare you and those traveling with you champions of Redcliffe. You will always be a welcome guest within these halls. And for you, Warden, a shield of the same make as those that have been given to our finest knights. We should speak of Loghain, brother. There is no telling what he will do once he learns of your recovery. Loghain instigates a civil war even though the Darkspawn are on our very doorstep. Long I have known him, he is a sensible man, one who never desired power. I was there when he announced he was taking control of the throne, Eamon. He is mad with ambition, I tell you. Mad indeed. Mad enough to kill Caelan to attempt to kill myself and destroy my lands. Whatever happened to him, Loghain must be stopped. What's more, we can scarce afford to fight this war to its bitter end. I could unite those opposing Loghain, yes. But not all oppose him. He has some very powerful allies. We have no time to wage a campaign against him. Someone must surrender if Ferelden is to have any chance at fighting the Darkspawn. I will spread word of Loghain's treachery, both here and against the King. But it will be but a claim made without proof. Those claims will give Loghain's allies pause. But we must combine it with a challenge Loghain cannot ignore. We need someone with a stronger claim to the throne than Loghain's daughter, the Queen. Are you referring to Alistair, brother? Are you certain? I would not propose such a thing if we had an alternative. But the unthinkable has occurred. Tegan and I have a claim through marriage, but we would seem opportunists no better than Loghain. Alistair's claim is by blood. And what about me? Does anyone care what I want? You have a responsibility, Alistair. Without you, Loghain wins. I would have to support him for the sake of Ferelden. Is that what you want? I... B but I... No, my lord. I see only one way to proceed. I will call for a landsmeet, a gathering of all of Ferelden's nobility in the city of Denerim. There, Ferelden can decide who shall rule, one way or another. Then the business of fighting our true foe can begin. What say you to that, my friend? I do not wish to proceed without your blessing. None of this would be possible without you. You led Alistair here. You saved my life with the urn of sacred ashes. It's your lead, I follow. I am a credible enough figure in this nation to call the landsmeet. But I hold no illusions that I could face Loghain without you. Surely you see that. That depends. If we cannot get a consensus in the landsmeet for Alistair, we cannot afford to oppose Loghain either. Does that mean Loghain could win? A man who killed his own king? Who has gone mad with power? Perhaps. We must see that he does not. Ferelden must stand united to defeat the Darkspawn. A fractured nation will not defeat the Blight, even given my army and those gathered with your treaties. I hope that's a joke. I hope it does not come to that. If you are suggesting surrender, consider that he has already sought your death. You think he will spare you, knowing what you know? Ferelden must stand united to defeat the Darkspawn. 
A fractured nation will not defeat the Blight. Very well. I will send out the word. But before we proceed, I believe there is the matter of the mage, my son's tutor. He still lives, I understand. He does. He is in the dungeon, brother. Have him brought here, Tegan. I wish to see him. Jowan, what you have done is not in question. You tried to assassinate me and set into motion a series of events that nearly destroyed everything I cherish. What have you to say in your own defense? Nothing, my lord, other than to say I am sorry. I expect no mercy for what I've done. I see. Grey Warden, have you anything to say on Jowan's behalf? You damn him with faint praise, I see. Then there is nothing more to say. Jowan, I hereby sentence you to death. May the Maker show you the mercy we come on. Thank you, my lord. Now, back to the matter of the landsmeet. We should head to Denerim as soon as possible. I can delay that, however, if you have other plans. I would prefer not giving Loghain time to consider, but it is up to you. I do not wish to go to Denerim unless you are with me. Excellent. I shall make the arrangements. Let us be off to Denerim, and may the Maker watch over us. Denerim is the heart and soul of Ferelden. It was the city of King Kalanad, the birthplace of Andraste. As stubborn as a Mabari, and as good to have on your side. If we defeat Loghain here, the rest of the nation will follow us. By calling the Landsmeet, I've struck the first blow. The advantage, for the moment, is ours. He will have little choice but to show himself, to oppose us directly. He will strike back at us. The only question that remains is how soon. Loghain, this is an honor that the Regent would find time to greet me personally. How could I not welcome a man so important as to call every lord in Ferelden away from his estates? while a Blight claws at our land. The Blight is why I'm here. With Kaelin dead, Ferelden must have a king to lead it against the Darkspawn. Ferelden has a strong leader. It's Queen, and I lead her armies. And who is this, Seaman? Some new stray you picked up on the road? And here I thought it was only royal bastards you played the nursemaid to. Well, you're admitting the royal part. That's a start. The Kuzlans are dead. The Terran of High Ever belongs to the Howls, and rightfully so. You have no rights. Your family surrendered them when I revealed them to be traitors to the King. You are either very bold or very stupid to threaten the Tern before witnesses. Enough, Carthian. This is not the time or place. I had hoped to talk you down from this rash course, Eamon. Our people are frightened. Our king is dead. Our land is under siege. We must be united now if we are to endure this crisis. Your own sister, Queen Rowan, fought tirelessly to see Ferelden restored. Would you see her work destroyed? You divide our nation and weaken our efforts against the Blight, with your selfish ambitions to the throne. Kaelin depended on the Grey Warden's prowess against the Darkspawn, and look how well that ended. Let us speak of reality rather than tall tales. Stories will not save us. I cannot forgive what you've done, Loghain. Perhaps the Maker can. But not I. Our people deserve a king of the Theron bloodline. Alistair will be the one to lead us to victory in this blight. Oh, is that all I have to do? No pressure. The Emperor of Orlais also thought I could not bring him down. Expect no more mercy than I showed him. 
There is nothing I would not do for my homeland. Well, that was bracing. I didn't expect Loghain to show himself quite so soon. I would not ask you to, but bear in mind that he will be well protected by his alliance with Loghain. He always seemed the kind of man who enjoyed kicking stray dogs. I would not have thought Loghain would trust him. We need eyes and ears in the city. Loghain has been here for months. The roots of all his schemes must begin here. The sooner we find them, the better we can turn them to our advantage. Go have a look around, and see what you can turn up. Better yet, find the nobles who have arrived for the landsmate. Test the waters. See how many will support us. When you're ready to talk strategy, come upstairs to my sitting room. We can lay out our plans for the lands meet then. Everything in here appears to be breakable. It seems most impractical. Ah, Warden. I trust you've made yourself comfortable. Good, because it's likely to be your last rest for a while. This is Elena. She's... I am Queen Enora's handmaiden. She sent me here to ask for your help. Or perhaps the young lady prefers to speak for herself. The Queen. She is in... a difficult position. She loved her husband, no? and trusted her father to protect him. When he returns with no king and only dark rumors, what is she to think? She worries, no? But when she tries to speak with him, he does not answer. He tells her not to trouble herself. My queen suspects she cannot trust her father. And Logan, he is very subtle, no? But when and how, he is privy to all the secrets and not so subtle. So she goes to how? A visit from the Queen to the new Isle of Denrum is only a matter of courtesy. And she demands answers. He calls her every sort of name, traitor being the kindest, and locks her in a guest room. If the palace guard be siege, house estate, my lady will certainly be killed before they can reach her. I think her life is in danger. I heard how say she would be a greater ally dead than alive, especially if her death could be blamed on Arl Eamon.
We may have no choice but to trust Anora. The Queen is well loved. If Loghain succeeded in pinning her death on me, I'm not sure that's a risk we can afford to take. I have some uniforms. I'll hire so many new girls every day. A few more will not cause much stir. I will show you to the Serpent's entrance. We must slip in and out with my queen before anyone is the wiser. I will go ahead to House Estate. Meet me there as soon as you can. Of course. I haven't been here in a while. They've changed the dining room. Ask away. Yes, me too. And I got the feeling at the end there that it saw us, was aware of us, whatever you want to call it. Could have just been my imagination, I suppose. What do you think? You know how some people want to be right all the time? Me, not so much. I guess one thing is certain, at least, isn't it? It's official. This is a blight. I haven't been here in a while. They've changed the dining room. Ask away. Of course. Sure, I could. I could even teach you, I suppose. Anyone who's been trained as a warrior. I guess if I'm going to give up Chantry secrets, I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp, and I'll see what I can do. I haven't been here in a while. Ask away. Of course. It will be done. Yes. Indeed. Yes. I'm so hard to believe that you have been through so much at such a young age. I think I look younger than I am. Yes, yes, that is possible. When I was your age, I was just about ready to take on my first apprentice. In hindsight, <laughs> perhaps I should have waited Magic a few more years. I was arrogant. Never... Strange that matters can be so tumultuous and yet the day still be so bright. Oh, my pardon, just thinking aloud. Are you here for the Chanter's board? I am Sister Justine, curator of the reliquary of this Chantry. <laughs> Pride again. <laughs> it is hard to live up to the example of Andraste. The archivist tends the books, and I tend the sacred relics. I also search for more to add to our collection, which is more difficult than it sounds. Really? Oh. Pardon my incredulity. I would like to examine them in any event. Let me see. The scrolls are old, no question, and the script. It's written in cipher. Early believers used them to keep their writings safe from the Devinter Magus. These could be authentic. Please, let me examine it. I need parchment, quill, and ink. What was the trick to the cipher again? Ah. Uh. I examined your scrolls. I know a few of the early Chantry ciphers, but I'm not fully familiar with this one. The bits I have made out. This may be an account of Mafarath's final days, and perhaps more. I know, it's remarkable. The same Mafrath who betrayed our prophet and saw her burn alive in Minrathrus. 
If we could get a real translation, well, it could be the find of our lifetime. When I finish decoding it, absolutely, but it will not be easy. It could take months. The ciphers were designed to be difficult for the Magisters to decrypt. Who knows what secrets we can uncover, what truths we can find. Here is all of the allowance I have for acquisitions. Take it and go. A thousand, thousand blessings. Blessed are the peacekeepers, champions of the just.